Hey, hello, what's up everyone? Welcome to by far the most exciting part of Fire Emblem Awakening Analysis, which is, of course, talking about kids, which we are doing this third and hopefully, possibly last episode of Fire Emblem Awakening tier list review. I have this nearly complete tier list that I want to make as good as possible, and I don't know enough about Awakening to make that possible, so once again returning here is Casey. Hello Casey, welcome. Hello, Mecca. I'm excited to talk about this. Mm -hmm. uh, I have three pages of notes. Yes, <laughs> I love notes. They're my favorite to not make, but just take off of someone else, which in this case I will, I will happily do. So you have you have three pages of notes on, on Awakening Eugenics, right? Yes. Great, great. I'm definitely going to keep that in the first part of my video. YouTube is very friendly to stuff like that. <laughs> okay, um, so before we get into each specific kids, I thought it would be nice to ask you something that I've been... I think I've asked it before, but I don't remember the answers to it, so I'm just going to ask it again, and everyone's going to have to go along with it. Um, I know what I look for when I'm making pairings in genealogy in FE4, because that's what I am, like, sort of familiar with, but I rarely have a great idea of what to look for when I'm trying to make awakening pairings, so... I'm going to guess that it has to do with like what skills you can get and how easily you can get them and maybe how magic or strength based someone is, like what kind of growth they pass down. Uh, what do you look for when you're trying to find out what a good pairing is, generally speaking? Yeah, so um, in a normal like hard mode or lunatic mode or whatever run, um, the, the biggest thing I actually look for first is how well do the parents pair ups uh how well do the parents pair ups complement each other um and their stats like one of the main reasons i go with shirsh and henry a lot is because his meme berserker build we talked about in the second video actually complements her wyvern and griffin stats really well mm. and his hex and anathema um also correspond well to the to helping her with her hit mm, yeah so basically the gen one combat uh synergy basically it's not even anything to do with the kids themselves but just how they work together before they are paired and after they're paired i guess is that right yep okay yeah that's the first thing i look for the next thing i look for is for each individual kid is there a particular skill that's easy for their second parent to pass down that I really want on them. Um, like I said, a common reason I slap Gregor and stall on people is, you know, first off, everyone loves Merc and Cav pair up bonuses, but basically every kid also loves arms, thrift and discipline. These two parents start off with those skills from the start. So it's a natural choice to pass down to a kid if you want that skill on a kid it's interesting to see you here to hear you say not see you say but i guess uh discipline because that's not the skill i think of very much when i'm thinking like oh let me get my kids this skill i'm usually thinking of like active skills like you know uh, i don't know soul or it's not really active skill but a skill that helps in combat you know what i mean whereas discipline is like raising weapon rank i guess it's helpful for kids that don't start in the class that they want to become and they need to raise their weapon ranks yeah and i actually run into this issue in lunatic and lunatic plus a lot because i love using archers and i love using bows in general it's one of the easiest ways to avoid taking counter damage it's also good to have cavalier access in the first place so even if i don't end up passing down discipline cavalier is a great class and having discipline to raise both of those weapon ranks is really beneficial um so but those are just examples okay fair enough and real quick reminder for me because it's been a while since i looked at the exact mechanics do parents pass down all their all their classes to kids barring like some weird exceptions that have to do with i think like gender restrictions yeah so in, in unless it's a special class like dancer or lord or spoilers i guess conquer <laughs> um <laughs> the the kids will get all their classes the except the exceptions are gender locked classes and for some reason pan's wyvern rider class 
for some reason that turns into barbarian for yarn. So if you want him to be a wyvern rider, you have to give him parent who also has wyvern rider, then he'll inherit it. Hmm. That's that's the weird thing about yarn. Um, but he uh incidentally is a kid who wants discipline because he starts out with no weapon ranks. Okay, I see. Well, I, I suppose I, I, w I was going to say I'm going to keep that in mind, but honestly, you're probably going to keep it in mind. I'm just going to nod and agree to it and be like, yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Um, yes. <laughs> I guess last question ish is like, do you care about uh, the parents stats like growths and bases at all? Or does it really does that, is that like a not really a factor, not a factor at all? It's something I definitely keep in mind. There's nothing wrong with pairing a strength-based character with a magic-based character. Ah, that's good to know. It can actually lead to some. It can actually lead to fun, some fun mixed builds, uh, eleven sword builds, even bolt axe builds. Um, if you're feeling a little spicy, mm -hmm. for the most part, what usually happens because I generally keep one parent in the front and one parent is a backpack is the parent in the front ends up way over leveled compared to the other one. So that parent will be way more influential on the stat build of the child or children. Mm -hmm. So it ends up being a case of the pair up bot ended up ending up being more of a source for uh, whatever skills they're passing down um, or whatever growth they might be offering um but usually for hard and even for lunatic and lunatic plus you can get away with some pretty memey builds all right i'm glad to hear it because that means uh we, we can be versatile in our in our thoughts we can keep we can be open-minded about them uh, i am wondering exactly i i one part that made it hard for me to tear the children in anywhere but uh c which was like i said last time it was just a cop out i was like all right C's for children. I'm just going to put them there because I have no idea what to do with these characters. Even if I know everything about them mechanically, I think I would still be a bit unsure because they are so variable. And even if they were solid, like even if every kid had one set of parents that they would be, I think I'd still have some trouble tiering them because their recruitment is variable. You can pick them up kind of almost whenever you want after a certain point in the game. And then from there, they seem kind of hard to train if you're just playing story and parallel battles, if you're not grinding. In my playthrough, I grinded a lot. I just grind up kids after picking them up just to make sure they were viable for next episode. So I don't really know how well they function when you're not grinding, which I, I expect will change the viability of kids quite a lot, how much of that they will need to be good. But I hope you're able to help me with these dilemmas. You don't have to spoil what's going to happen to them, but uh, I'm going to assume not all of them are going to neatly stay stacked in C tier like this uh, behind Sairi. Uh, so we have these seven over here and then we have a uh six kids i guess it's more like five kids because morgan is on there twice um and we're just gonna arrange them as we go so my proposal will be that we just start in the c tier and start sorting them out properly and then we go to the kids these days tier to tier the rest um seems good to you yeah it seems great okay uh i guess we can start with nor and as always i'll just give like my minor first impression slash considerations and then you can go ahead and tell me how wrong i am so Sure. Uh, with Nor, uh, I found it weird that the, the very first time I learned that she was an archer, I was very weirded out because I didn't expect a kid of a dark mage to be an archer for some reason. I thought that was kind of odd, and I thought she must be bad because she has a magical parent, but as you just said, that doesn't have to be a big hindrance at all. And I don't actually remember who I paired with Tharja. I think it might have been Henry, actually, in my playthrough, but I don't remember why. Uh, all I know is that Noir didn't feel great. But the fact that I can't even remember what exactly I made her is probably not a very good sign for her. Uh, I know you really like Archers on Lunatic Plus, but I feel like not a very great class for her. So she probably wants some good reclass options. I think I made her a sorcerer thinking about it because I was like, all right, she starts as a parent. So I can just reclass her to Dark Mage and she'll be good no matter what. And she was a sorcerer. And I think the best way to sum it up was she was definitely one of the sorcerers of all time because she wasn't like great, but she was okay because she was a sorcerer, but not necessarily because she was noir. Uh, but I remember not being like super super hype about her but you know because sorcerers was so good i was okay with her but uh i feel, i'm finding myself running into the same dilemmas like okay uh, like everything i just explained to me makes it hard for me to pick a tier for her so i 
can't really come up with any place to put her from here. And I think the same goes for like most kids. Um, but she was probably not one of the better children for me. I guess I'll put it that way. So what do you do with Noir? So Noir is one of those children that can easily go magical or physical. Barge's strength is not actually that bad. And if you give her a physical dad, uh, she will work just fine as an archer. If you give her a magical dad, she will uh, work really well in dark mage. You can even dabble in regular mage if she has a parent who has access to that. Um, one of the things I really like about Noir is she can immediately come with vengeance from Tharja. And vengeance snipers are, oh my god, so good. Mm. Um, <laughs> that does sound fun, because you can be like I, low HP and I just kill people with crits, right? Yeah, like uh, low HP and you and you just kill people with uh, really high stacked vengeance damage. And if you're player phasing a lot and clearing out enemies, which is usually how I play Lunatic and Lunatic Plus and also hard mode. If you're having her clear out enemies with a longbow where where no other enemy can touch her, um, that that works out really well. Um, my favorite my favorite father for her to go either way is actually Gregor, because she can get arms thrift for uh, Nosferatu tanking if she wants. Uh, you can give her a forge Nosferatu once she hits D tomes and go crazy. Um, he also, if you want to do a different build, he also passes soul, or she can just go through the mercenary class herself. Um, there's a lot she can do with Gregor as a parent. Um, other standouts would probably be, again, Stahl, um, for discipline, if nothing else. Uh, Stahl could also pass her defender, which would be really nice. Uh, one of the things a lot of people don't mention is that Tharja and by extension Noir have access to Luna, which is not super needed if you're already using Vengeance, but it is something I like to point out uh, just because it's an option. I personally don't really like Great Knight as a class. Fred's kind of the exception. Um, but she uh, can really do some work um, in a lot of different ways. I really like her. Um, a lot of people will point out that if she has Gaius or Donal as a parent, she can go and get Gale Force. Mm -hmm. That was that was the usual meta. I, Everything was like new. It was like people were just like, okay, let's just Gale Force on everyone. Yeah, which is something you want to do if you're, you know, grinding for apotheosis or something. But in normal gameplay. She doesn't really have the time to go get Gale Force. I just like Nas tanking and Vengeance uh, bow, longbow sniping with her. Mm -hmm. That does sound really fun to just have uh, low HP her killing everything. It sounds like Three Houses Bernie, the way she plays, kind of. Which seems really fun. Um, so do you yeah. think she should move around from where she is? Because I have, I have so much trouble deciding how to tier kids personally. So I don't know, what, what are your considerations? Yeah, I think C-tier is where most kids are going to end up because if you give them their best parent, they can go pretty high. But if you give them their worst parent, they're basically useless. Mm. Um, so you're saying tier so, them based on like an average of all their parents then? Because with parents, um, usually the way I'm I see guessing, it... Oh, sorry, um, can I finish this thought real quick? Um, yeah, the way I The way I see it usually with genealogy, the way I did it, it was like, okay, we're going to tier kids based on their best parents... Maybe if that parent was in really the high demand, we'd consider alternative parents. But generally, I'm okay with tiering people based on the best parents. Of course, I guess in Awakening, you run into the issue of, okay, then everyone is married. Everyone gets, like, Robin as their dad or mom, which is not entirely based in reality. So maybe not Robin-based tiering. But I'm assuming Gregor is not as high in demand as Robin is, right? So what if we just assume that she no. gets a good pairing? Like, not necessarily the best one, but, like, a good one. I don't know if oh, there's any well, like, super bad yeah. ones. Oh yeah, then, well, in that case, we would also have to re-tier Lucina, but I think oh, in fair. the case that Noir... In the, in, the, in the case that Noir gets Gregor or some other 
parent who would be conducive to that sort of strategy. I think Henry could also do that. Henry could also, um, if you're doing the Berserker meme, he can also pass Wrath, which would be really funny oh, with Vengeance. Yeah, and actual crits, because I said crits earlier, <laughs> but it was actually Vengeance. Yeah, that sounds really yeah. funny. Um, so I I would put Noir at like upper B minus, honestly, probably just above Tharja. Above Tharja, well, so better than her mom. That's pretty funny. Uh, we did mention that Tharja has like yeah, some severe. Yeah, just more versatility. Yeah, she sounds like I, th I think Tharja was like the conclusion we came to was like she's got good potential, but some consistency issues. No matter what you're trying to do with her, so it's kind of learned like that. It's it's weird to me to yeah. tear her above her mom, but I can I can kind of see it, so I'm just gonna allow it because I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to tear kids based on, well, what if you gave them the bad parents, right? Because no one's gonna do that. It's not a yeah. viable play. Like we're we're kind of tearing units based on like that we're using them while we're knowing what we're doing. Like yeah, Olivia is very bad if you have her solo enemy phase, but we're not doing that. And in the same way, I think it doesn't make sense to <laughs> tear kids based on, well, what if you gave them a really bad pairing? I don't know what a bad pairing would be, but. There's, you could probably think of one bad pairing somewhere, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So, yeah, sure. Um, so above Tharja, uh, you said real quick yeah. we, we tiered Lucina, I think in episode one actually, and I think it was we put her here based on the fact that she was good no matter what parent you got, right? Like her base kit yeah. was good, that's why we put her here. But you're saying she's relatively worse off if we assume people get good pairings, then, right? Um, she's actually better off because oh. all, all of her mothers are viable. It's just that in some cases, like if you give her Sumia or Robin, um, she's just really, really good. Mm. Um, like, cause with Sumia or Robin, she can inherit Gale Force right away. Um, she can... If she doesn't have that option, she can re reclass to Pegasus for her own flight utility. She can reclass to Cavalier, get Discipline, get Luna if she feels like it, get Defender if she feels like it. She has so many options. Um, she can even work in Archer, um, Archer to Bow Knight. That's a fun build for her. And even with Maribel, I've had her go Mage to Dark Knight, and that's been really funny. So, I I think even as I think assuming Lucina gets what would consider her, her to be her best mom, I I think she's just like right behind Cordelia. Sounds fair to me, honestly. I have no I have no contradiction here. Like the the only kids the only thing that really works against the kids here, I think for these positions is that they lack availability a little bit, but they don't join that much later than some of these other units that they're sharing a tier with, like maybe a couple chapters. But their endgame potential is often, like, so, so good. Because I feel like a lot of the Gen 1 units just don't yeah, really keep up sure. in, like, late game anyway. Uh, without, like, severe investment. Like, some of these... I didn't use all of them, but some of these I used and I got into late game. I was like, well, they're, they're kind of useless. I need something broken rather than something good. Even on a hard mode. Because awakening late game can be so brutal. With the enemy density and strength. Yeah. So, it makes sense. But yeah, do you hard mode is the only mode with an actual difficulty curve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even then I would call it like a difficulty like hill sometimes, or difficulty like just a straight up line yeah. basically that just goes vertically, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, real quick, I swear this will be the last side tension I'll introduce, but do you feel like they can do this, they can keep this up, even if you're not like side grinding or anything? You're just playing story chapters and paralogs and that's it. Does it does it still work out that way? Yep, I. Okay. Yep, um, that uh, that the assumption for all my kid analysis is no grinding of parents and no grinding of kids unless you count like in map grinding grinding, which I don't. Uh huh. Fair enough. <laughs> so you mean like slowing down a little bit to feed him kills stuff like that? Yeah. Okay. Which for. Yeah, we will get to it, but for some units, that's way easier than others. Mm -hmm. Lucina, you can start feeding her right away in Chapter 14. Noir can contribute in her beginning chapter, especially if you keep her in Archer, because there's so many freaking flyers in her chapter. Mm -hmm. So um, she's often able to promote for me either towards the end of that chapter or right after. Hmm. Makes sense. All right. 
Um, I guess that's about it for uh, Noir and by extension Lucina, who we did a quick re-tiering of. Um, so shall yeah. we get to to Laurent then? Hmm. I I think what Laurent, I did with, oh my gosh. Yeah, I think what I did for Laurent was like kind of similar to Noir is I was like, okay, this kid can become a dark mage. I didn't want to make all my kids dark mages, but I didn't want to make some of them dark mages, and we just happened to hit two in a row here. I remember I was like, yeah. I, I recruited I recruited Lawrence from the village or whatever he, he joins from. And then I said, oh, wow, this is such a cool map sprite. I love it because he's like his little glasses on, right? And then I was like, all right, that's cool. Uh, you reclass, you yeah. go, and this became a generic dark mage. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's kind of sad. Yeah. But it was too good uh, not to do. He, I think he, it was actually my best unit in all of Awakening because my Robin wasn't that great. And I used Morgan as like a, uh, a rally bot, but Lord was like the actual good... I, I gave him the meta, quote unquote, meta Dark Mage build. I gave him Vantage from Longku, and I made sure he got Vengeance, I think. I'm not sure if I did that. At, at some point, he got Vengeance. I'm not sure if he got it from Muriel or he just kind of got it on his own. But he was very, very overkill against just about everything. So I had a good first impression of him, but again, it might have just been Dark Mage. And the way you said, oh my god, Lord, I'm assuming there is more to him than just that, right? Yeah, it kind of leans into that a little bit, but Laurent is, again, one of those units who's actually pretty versatile. Um, Muriel has terrible strength, but if you give him a high-strength father, like even Frederick, he can do some Berserker memes, he can do Dark Knight stuff if you want him to be mixed, but his, his real Shining Star ability is Dark Mage, um, especially if you give him a parent like Longku who can give him Vantage, or in my opinion, even better, here, here comes Gregor again, because um, Gregor can give him Arms Thrift, or what I like to do in Lunatic Plus uh, is have Gregor level up just enough to get Soul, pass that to Laurent. Laurent goes from Mage to... Mer to mercenary mm. to pick up arms thrift and then to dark mage this is all possible in his recruitment chapter by the way <laughs> yeah that was a lot um, of enemies there it's like the one where you enemies spawn if you visit the village right yep um and it's super easy to prepare for that um and put and put him in positions where he'll be able to get kills and uh usually i have him inherent uh tome fair from muriel and it, oh my gosh, it's just, it, he just destroys so much. And he actually is even better than Noir in the, uh, in the perspective of, he starts with C tomes. So he doesn't have to wait to use Nosferatu t until his tomes rank up. Yeah, I noticed that too. Um, he's just, he's just... There's a reason that he was basically the main character of one of the first Lunatic Plus write-ups there ever was. He is so good. He it has always been good. I think he will always be top tier when it comes to... I mean, if he's top tier in Lunatic and Lunatic Plus, he just obliterates hard. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that when I did my hard mode runs, he just... It, it felt, I felt bad for the game <laughs> because Laurent was breaking, was breaking it so hard. That's kind of like the, 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 the theme of Awakening, right? You have like one or two characters that kind of explode in viability. You kind of ask yourself the question, why use anyone else? And Awakening never really has an answer to that question. <laughs> it's just, yeah, go ahead, do it. It's fine. It's what I'm done for. It's what I'm yeah. made for. Break, break the game, do it. And his magic is so high that with Forge Nas and Tome Fair, and he also starts with Magic plus two, he just kills things straight up a whole lot uh, in one shot. Not to mention that with Mage, he, he starts with Focus, and in Dark Mage, he'll eventually get Anathema. So he, can, he does his fair share of things too. One of my favorite things in the end game uh, is sometimes, you know, giving him that bonus box Mjolnir and watching him just crit stuff. <laughs> it's, he, he's, he is versatile, but 
he is known for the dark mage thing for a reason. He... I think I said in an earlier video we would get to the best dark mage in the game eventually. The best de dark mage in the game is Laurent. Oh, wow. Nice. That's He's a very unassuming character, I think. Like No one really talks about him, but it sounds like they should talk about him because he's that good. Sounds like... Uh, they should. Sounds like it's going like an A tier somewhere. Because, like... I would say A. A, okay. A tier. Fair enough. Um, above Krom? I yeah, I would say above Krom. No, oh, no. Well. In one guess. I can see it. It's... It's still weird to see kids over Gen 1 units. And I think it's because <laughs> I think it's because people ragged on kids for a long time online because people were like, well, if you grind, you can make anyone good. But, you know, if you, if you can make them good without grinding, then yeah, sure, I see it. And again, late game yeah. thresholds are nothing to be, uh, nothing to be joking about. Oh, kid yeah. here. Was there anything else yeah. about Lauren you wanted to say? <laughs> uh... No, I just, I, I have this feeling about all the kids where because I filled out the support log, uh, which take it took a lot of time, <laughs> but I've, I've technically married all of the parents, all of the parent <laughs> units, and so I consider the the awakening children all like my my adopted children. Uh -huh. <laughs> And Lauren, it's like, um, so it's like, not to it, pick favorites, but uh, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, Lauren's like, how about you? who's your favorite kid? <laughs> you're like, nobody, nobody's my favorite kid. You're, you're totally your favorite kid. You're totally the favorite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Lauren's, Lauren's best boy. Got it. Um, I yep. think we're at. Her name is Sephira in this game, right? Or is that the Fates version? Yeah, yeah Sephira. Uh, I remember her initial class access being good, but in my Let's Play, I think she was la one of the last kids I recruited, and so she didn't really get a whole lot of time to shine compared to some of the others, so I might be underestimating her. I also kind of forgot what I did exactly with her. I think I paired her with Jerome a lot when he was in Wyvern, and then it's pretty easy to just have Jerome kill everything, so that might have been why she was not featured a whole lot. But I think she was okay. She's Cordelia's daughter, and so she naturally has a lot of like good access to classes. She she starts as a merc, I think, so that's like some good classes right there. Yep. Can't really go wrong with that. Um, that's one thing I've learned over the course of these things. So she seems fine. Um, trying to just, I'm I'm not sure whether I would rank her higher than Lucina personally, based on what I've seen. Uh, I think her paralog also unlocks kind of late. Just remember that part. That might also hurt her a little bit. So. Smells more like a B plus than an A kind of kid, um, but maybe I'm missing something about her because their skill kit might just flip that around. What is the deal with Severa? So Severa is actually really easy to get Gale Force on early, um, especially in Lunatic with the higher enemy density. Like usually, I have Cordelia to Gale Force somewhere in the middle of Chapter 14. Um, wow. And I'm usually feeding other people pretty considerably at that point. So um, I remember it was a little bit later and hard uh, just because the enemy density isn't so high. But uh, Cordelia can get to Gale Force pretty early on in the scheme of getting kids. And that's usually when I recruit Severa. So she comes with Gale Force. Mercenary is a great starting class. She can promote and get Soul and Axe Breaker, which Axe Breaker is pretty good. It, it's it's a uh, its utility definitely goes up in Lunatic, where in Endgame Paralogs there are Berserkers who you really want to zero out your the hit against you because they will have seventy nine attack. <laughs> Because they have, because they have Hackforge, Silver Axes, Axe Fair, and Max Strength, so uh, you don't want to get hit by those guys. Um, so having Axe Breaker late game is actually really good, um, and I value that a lot. Uh, the big thing with Severa is, and I probably, <clears throat> I probably should have laid this out ahead of time but I will only pair up I will only point out Robin as a potential parent if I think the 
parent pairing for Robin is really good, mm. or if Robin does something exceptional for the kid. I didn't talk about uh, av- I didn't talk about female Avatar much in the Lucina uh, ranking because I don't think female Avatar actually does that much for Lucina uh, uh, over Sumia. So um, this is another one where I'm going to talk about that. Um, so I think, I think male Robin with, um, a flyer, especially a Pegasus Knight with Gale Force, I think that's a pretty natural option because one of the things you can do is have Cordelia or Sumia, if you're using Sumia in this case, um, either one, you can have them attack something, activate Gale Force, and then a much tankier male Robin can switch to the front and end up, you know, the enemy phase tanking. Um, that's one of my fa- favorite strategies to use. So I think Robin makes a good husband for Cordelia, um, especially because of Robin's class flexibility. Usually in this case, you'd want him to go Merc uh, because everyone loves Merc parent bonuses. But, um, and I think giving Severa even more class access might be, it might be a little bit overkill, but there are certain things that I like having on her. She sees a lot of frontline combat in my experience, so having Veteran on her um, helps her get even more experience. Um, Usually if she inherits it and she's, once she's actually recruited in her paralog, she gains full levels from killing enemies. <laughs> um, and like half a level from damaging an enemy. It's really funny. That's really funny with um, Gale Force, especially. I like that a lot. Yeah. I love snowball. That's like the best. Um, Awakening's all about snowballing, right? So that seems like a really funny snowballing build. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, I think one of Severa's better class. Class progressions is like Merc to Archer to Bow Knight or Sniper. And depending on where her defense is at, I really like her in Assassin. Um, and Robin provides an easy way to have access to all those classes. But you know who else does? To those Stahl. classes? Stall. Oh, yeah, of course. Stall again. Yeah, nice. Stall has one of the best class sets um, that doesn't include Pegasus Knight, Pegasus Knight in the game. Um, and I find that having Severa reclass to an archer and having discipline um, can be really beneficial because um, one of because she's going to start at E rank bows and I want her to get to long bows as soon as possible. Because aside from like a couple of enemies in a couple of chapters, nobody else has longbows. So she can basically never get countered, uh, which is pretty funny. Um, what rank is a longbow? B- she has this. D or C? Uh, C, C rank. Okay. Uh, you can find like a 10 use towering bow on sparkly tiles. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I mean, she could make it work with her natural arms thrift, and I've sometimes done that. Um, but Longbow has better might, even if you forge Towering Bow. <laughs> um, I think it has better hit, too. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, uh, Severa is the kind of unit who can take frontline combat, um, even if she's not Longbowing everything. Uh, which is why I think Bow Knight is an, an assassin are natural for her. She'll lose longbow access, but getting her access to swords back and either having eight move or super ridiculous speed and skill to proc whatever skills she might want, uh, that's also very good. Um, especially since she can easily get soul. Soul on an assassin's really funny, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I th- I think Severa is really good. Um, 
I, I may be biased because I actually do really like Mary and Cordelia for plot reasons, <laughs> but it is it is a pairing that I've seen work with Robin many times. It's a pairing I've seen work with Stahl many times. Uh, sometimes if I'm feeling spicy, I'll give her fake uh, because um, I, I'd have to wait real longer to recruit her for this, but her having Axe Axe Fair as a hero is just really funny. <laughs> Even more ridiculous damage. Yeah, I, I think your point yes. about um, marrying Robin to someone is like fair because obviously Robin is like the best parent for any kid, period, right? Because he gives everything that you ever want plus more. Um, so it's not really fair to say, okay, yeah. this kid is good with Robin. But I think it makes sense if you're if you're if the mom, or I guess in Prom's Day case the dad, I guess, is providing something for Robin because Robin is Morgan. Right, and so if your parent yep. get, has tends to give gill force to Morgan, that seems like a pretty good deal for Robin, if you know what I mean, right? So I think it makes a lot of sense to consider yep. Robin one of Severa's like, or one of Severa's better parents. I guess you should, I could put it that way. So I don't, I don't mind the way you're, yeah. you're utilizing Robin in this case at all. And we can get more into him when we get to Morgan. But I think this is, uh, this was, this was good to throw out there. Uh, so the way you've talked about Severa makes me think she also goes in A tier. But she seems really good. Yeah, I'd say right below Lucina. Fair. Looks for me. She does seem to have like a, both a good base kit and a lot of options depending on parents. So seems good. Seems good. Is yeah. that is that the Severa thesis? Is that yep. the dissertation? Also, oh. Lucina and Severa belong together because <laughs> I ship them. Okay. So <laughs> Alright, not gonna get into that fight personally, but hey. If that's what you like, <laughs> go for it. Okay, uh, is it kill time? Yeah, okay. shell time. Kill time, okay. I <laughs> For this one, I was bribed by one of my patrons. Thank you all, by the way, if you're still listening at this point. Uh, I was bribed to put Fake as her parents, so to marry Vake and Sully, and then to level Vake all the way to the point where he gets counter and then pass that down to a general kill for massive funnies. And the massive funnies included usually just like damage counters that did like nothing extra for a uh, kill. It was very bad. Like she would like not two shot a warrior enemy. I remember this very distinctly. And then she would counter and the damage wouldn't do anything whatsoever to make it better. So that was just all around fantastic experience. But one time she <laughs> countered a hammer warrior and she really got a revenge there. So that was really cool. But uh, <laughs> I kept her a general for I think her entire life. I yeah, I, never, I don't think I ever went great knight. Generals have obvious disadvantages that I've gone over like a thousand times. So I'm not going to repeat them all here. But they are always a funny class. Whenever I'm playing a game, pretty much casually, I enjoy using generals, and they were fantastic. But I am absolutely sure that there are better options than that in a game where hammers have triple effectiveness and are sometimes forged, and where you want more mobility out of units. So I'm curious what you think of uh, kill otherwise, because other than that, all I really know is uh, Kiel has a hard time getting Gil Force, I think, because her mom doesn't have it. That's the only other thing I remember about her that stands out to me. So, um, what's the Kiel dissertation? Yeah, the Shell dissertation. Uh, she... So she's one of those weird units in terms of Awakening Inheritance, because Sully doesn't have access to Knight, but she starts as a Knight for story reasons. Um... So, aside from Morgan, she will actually naturally have the most class access out of any parent if her- out of any kid if the other parent gives her three new classes. Uh, so that's cool, I guess. I don't think Knight does a whole lot for her because Sully's growths tend to more be fast and skilled but not as much strength and not as much defense and I think putting her kid in an armor class it doesn't utilize her best strengths um I actually think that Krom is a pretty good parent for her hmm. um because um I think Aether on Shell is pretty funny especially if you pass her Luna from Sully um, that's just, that's just really funny. She can't get Gale Force that way, but it, it works. Um, it's probably 
Crom's worst pairing, but it's it's honestly pretty good for Shell. Um, if we're just talking main game, which I don't think main game she's getting Gale Force, even if she does have Gaius or Donal or technically male avatar as the yeah. parent. Because she has to go all the uh, way through like Darkfire, just, right? It's like a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I like doing with her um, is sometimes I will still give her Gaius anyway because. I do like what his speed growth does for her. Um, and I actually... So normally I don't do this with kids because you know how I feel about Pavis lock. Um, which is what I call when a unit is locked to mainly me, mainly melee weapons. <laughs> That's a sentence. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think... I think she makes a fun wyvern lord. Um, if she does have that extra speed because she's just doubling shit anyway. Um, the other thing I like doing with her um, is eventually making her an assassin. I love assassins and I think I think, you know, naturally inheriting Luna from Sully is a pretty solid play because then she'll just be procking Luna all the time. Um, put her in a high skill class. Um, which is again where Krom can come in handy, or you know what time it is, stall time. <laughs> so stall doesn't actually give, uh, stall doesn't actually give Shell many new classes. There's actually a lot of overlap, but he does give her Archer. So um, that's a fun thing you can do. Um, honestly, outside of a hard context, I haven't used Shell a whole lot just because. I usually don't feel like having room on the team for Sully, unfortunately. Um, as I've said, Sully is the is the second Cavalier to stall because I usually keep them both in the back for Cavalier bonuses. Um, and to uh, I think like, another yeah. strong op yeah, I think another strong option. Uh, would actually be Vake, um, but maybe not passing down counter. Uh, I, I have this whole thing about Awakening Counter where it's great on enemies, but it's practically useless on player units. It is. It was a mean bribe. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think if you were to put the same amount into Vake and uh, get him to either Soul or Axe Fair, I think that would be a good option for shell mm -hmm. um obviously you wouldn't want to pass down luna from sully then because soul and luna would interfere with each other mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i think shell has a lot of options she could also go gregor um and um you know do all the gregor things Gaius basically is, right yeah, for Gregor things. Um, like I said, guys, is a good option to give her some speed. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I'm feeling kind of eh on Shell. Um, I can tell. I yeah. think. <laughs> I can yeah, see why though. I I think, yeah, I think given what I think given her base class, her options, and. Uh, the kind of finagling you have to do with giving her a good father. I I think I think I could be swayed into B minus tier, but I think she's one of the kids that's gonna still wind up in C. Mm -hmm. That's fair. We can keep her where she is and move others above her if if needed. Uh, I'm assuming you don't want her above yeah. Sairi because I thought I think you said Sairi was actually kind of decent-ish at least when she joined, whereas Kale seems to have a real opportunity yeah. to cost. Um, I'm, I, I'm especially, yeah. uh, what stuck with me especially was that you were like, uh, I don't really like using Sully. And if you have to use Sully and get her to Luna, for example, like if that's, if that's actual suffering, then that makes making Kiel yeah. good a lot more painful. I'm, I'm saying Kiel, by the way, cause I'm used to that, but you know, I don't actually know if it's pronounced like that. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's pronounced shell because it's a pun on her being in an armor shell. <laughs> that's probably right. Okay. I'll try to get into the habit of saying shell, but, uh, no guarantees there. <clears throat> That's good. I though. just do it for the pun because I love puns. <laughs> you know what? Fair enough. Okay. 
so we're keeping shell in the seashell. So um, I guess we'll get going with uh, Cynthia. Now, because I heard you talk about Severa a lot, I have a lot of hope for Cynthia because she's Sumia's kid. And because if Cordelia can get Guild Force that soon, then I'm assuming that Sumia is no less difficult. In fact, we talked about Sumia getting Guild Force in her own entry in episode one as well. So that's good potential already. Uh, that presumably opens her up to a lot of the options that you also mentioned for Cordelia, like maybe a Robin marriage or something like that. And, you know, that seems pretty good. Plus, the starting class of Pegasus Knight itself is just really neat. Uh, it's, it's it, Like, it overlaps with her parents' class, I guess, but Pegasus Knight is such a good starting class, I don't really think anyone will mind. And I had a lot of fun using Cynthia myself. I think I just stuck with Dark Flyer for the most part. He's, like, trained her up from, like, yeah, just as a Pegasus Knight, and his promoter her. I was like, all right, this class is good. I'm just going to keep it. So, um, seems good. The pattern I'm noticing is that, like, some parents come up, some parent names come up more often than not. Uh, and for physical kids, it seems to be mostly, like, the, the Gregor show, and then occasionally mention of, like, Vake. So, those seem to be the most in-demand parents. And I'm assuming all those will work well for, uh, for Cynthia as well. So, how, how wrong am I? My literally only problem with Cynthia is that Sumia has a limited marriage pool. Oh, yeah. Um, so you can't give her... Unless you give her male Robin, she can never be a hero, which... That's, that's like, her whole shtick. That's gross. So, like... Yeah, I, I don't like it. Why, why can't Sumia marry Vake... Or or Gregor, because about that? That's so weird. I think the resulting, I, I think the resulting Cynthia would be fantastic. By the way, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, her being unable to be a hero without uh, a Robin pair feels wrong to me. Honestly, um, intelligence systems, what are you doing? Um, other than that, um, so Sumia's marriage pool is Robin, Crom. Fred, Gaius, and Henry. And all of those are actually fantastic parents for her. So, because you, in, unless you don't, unless you don't marry off Sumia, Cynthia can basically never go wrong. So, I think for that alone, she's at least B plus tier. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and I think it's fair to actually go into each of those options briefly because there's only five of them mm -hmm. uh male robin same benefits as uh male robin and cordelia um you know the whole gale force switch thing um and robin provides a lot of good classes for cynthia um and robin's uh uh asset and flock can actually influence Cynthia a lot because Cynthia's main thing is that she already has a ton of speed thanks to Sumia. So you can go with a magic Robin and make her a magical powerhouse. You can go with strength Robin and patch up that strength. You can go defense Robin and give Cynthia a little bit more bulk. Um, and... Again, she can inherit veteran right off the bat, which makes things funny, honestly, uh, in the same way veteran on any kid makes things funny. Um, but yeah, so Cynthia and with male Robin as, as a dad can do pretty nice things. She can even reclass to the tactician herself which um, I think she makes pretty good use of Ignis with her mixed offense. Uh, probably even better than Severa, honestly. Um, and uh, Cynthia... Sorry, give me a sec. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, and the tactician sprite for Cynthia is really adorable. <laughs> um, and you can and you can give her and you can give her pink pigtails. So um, if if that's not the best reason to use her, I don't know what is. Um, moving on to Crom though, Crom gives her ether, and Crom and Sumia is a pretty solid pairing. 
because their pair-up bonuses complement each other, especially if Krom goes into Cavalier. Um, it's good for Lucina, it's good for Cynthia. Um, in that case, I usually tend to make her a Cavalier or an Archer, um, just to um, either get Luna or capitalize on the high, high strength with Aether. Um, either way, I usually end up having her end game class be Bow Knight, just because there's a strategy with her backed up by Paladin Lucina um, as a Bow Knight with a Brave Bow um, to face. Basically, one round Grima or get a dance. I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. It was like, back up Lucina. All right, we're killing Grima. Yes. Um, so, Lucina's uh, Falchion, parallel Falchion dual strikes will be really good. And if if Cynthia has Aether and Luna, that'll really shred Grima. Um, and bows are the best ways to take down Grima. So it's it just works out. Um, at that point, they'll usually have an A support, so that's just really brilliant. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do with Crom Cynthia. Uh, Fred Cynthia, I think the natural pass down here is Luna. And I actually like promoting her to Falcon Knight at this point because her magic isn't going to be so good, so... Uh, having tomes with Dark Flyer is not that great, but she will do pretty good damage as a Falcon Knight. Or, even better, she can go into Paladin um, sometimes when Falcon Knight's done so, so that she'll have Lance Fair on top of that. Um, and um, Fred gives her a pretty good amount of strength, which uh, and he, and he doesn't detract from her speed growth that much. What you may have to wor watch out for is her speed cap. Um, it's actually going to be worse than Sumia's because Fred has a minus two, two strength cap. But usually speed in cap, hard, right? you're not getting enough kills. Huh? Did you say strength, strength cap or speed cap that gets reduced? Speed cap. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah... Usually you're not coming up on caps mattering in hard mode, but they do kind of matter in Lunatic and Lunatic Plus, so that is something to watch out for. Uh, Gaius Cynthia. A lot of people say it's a waste of Gaius because he's not giving Shell, Noir, or I guess Nah, Gale Force. Mm. But... <clears throat> sorry. Um, I, think, I think the amount of speed... As well as, he doesn't actually have bad strength. His his base is bad, but his growth is actually pretty good for strength. So giving Cynthia speed and strength growth, as well as access to things like uh, Swordmaster for uh, Astra and Swordfair, Assassin. I, I, think, I think Gaius Cynthia is actually really good. And might actually be one of the better uses of Gaius because you're not getting Gale Force on those other kids in in a normal playthrough anyway. Um, plus, he can just pass down movement plus one, which is even funnier on Cynthia, honestly. Um, and then Henry, um, it will take a while longer to get Cynthia if you go with Henry Cynthia, which is a little annoying, but he gives her access to auras, he improves her magic, um, he's perfectly serviceable, probably in a hard mode setting, Cynthia's worst dad, but she still turns out fine either way. Um, so I I think he's worth considering if you've used up all all of her other parents. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Is that the fifth? Henry. That yep. That's all of all Cynthia's right, parents. Right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, one more thing I wanted to say. Oh yeah, I think I did Frederick for my playthrough, and I just really enjoyed the Gen One synergy between Sumia and the Frederick. Just like fly Frederick over to somewhere, and especially in your early game, and just have extra speed, bonk him with Frederick, and then move on. It was also really nice. Like having him be mobile. Oh in yeah, the, desert the parents. Was good. 
yeah, the parent synergy is really good. And it actually turns out pretty well for Cynthia too, if, yeah. especially if you're trying to make her strength based. So yeah, I I think she's excellent. Another A tier then? Another A tier? Um dun, dun, Gosh. Dun, dun. Yeah, I'd I'd say on par with Lucina. As, as much as I hate to break Lucina and Severa up, <laughs> I think that's where she goes. Okay, fair enough. Okay. We are, uh, like, this is really intriguing, but we are coming up on the one hour mark. So I propose that for the other kids, we go with, like, two pairings to discuss, right? Because I think we went over five just now. If we did it for every kid, this whole video will be, like, three hours long. <laughs> I'm sorry. But cutting a little no, short, is I that okay? No, I did that for Cynthia because those are her only... Yeah, yeah. Those, I did that for Cynthia because those are her only options and they're all good. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Um, I mean, more analysis is always good, but I'm like, damn, I have to, I have to edit and edit yeah. all this at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. and, no I feel you mm -hmm. and I wouldn't do this uh, out of bias like if I was I was biased for any kids I would have said this after a Wayne Dark because he's the favorite of mine but uh, I <laughs> I think he, he uh, I paired Lissa with Robin so for me naturally Robin uh, Owen was the best kid uh, just by virtue of options I think Lauren ended up being the most powerful overall but Owen was really good uh, I have one really funny distinct memory with Owen using him in his joining chapter I think I did already turn him into a Dark Mage and started Nosferatu tanking, but he fought the boss and he needed the Nosferatu health to survive. I think he got doubled and the boss like went up to him, hit him in the face. He's like, all right. Uh, and he gave me like 5,000 quotes because he was about to like go Ignis Vengeance, uh, but then he missed and died <laughs> in true Owain fashion. And I had to replay the whole chapter. So thanks, Owain. After that, though, he was another like broken unit, just like Lauren. He just kind of broke the game in half. So. Uh, not a whole lot to comment there. The, the initial class doesn't seem that great. Uh, Myrmidon, I'm sure it has its like good things about it, like Inerrant Vintage has good synergy with a lot of classes, I'm sure. Uh, but I wasn't super impressed with that part. But uh, with with Robin as a parent, you can fix anything. And even if you don't have Robin as a parent, I'm sure he has some good options. But I have no idea what they are or where he goes. So what do we do with Owain Dark? So yeah, this is actually another one where I'd bring up Robin as a potential father. Um, just because the main thing that Owain needs is vengeance access to make best use of his vantage. He's probably not getting Gale Force because getting Gale Force on Lissa is a pain and a half. But he can make really good use of vantage, vengeance... And then reclassing to Sage and having Celica's Gale. Um, he can make good use of Veteran for the reasons that we've discussed for other units. And um, giving him uh, Vengeance to go along with his Vantage is really good. Uh, plus... Lissa is one of the easiest people to S rank early um, for male Robin because she's healing him all the time because he's the main combatant and he's the one taking the most damage. Um, so Lissa is the natural, natural early, easy choice. Um, and aside from a couple of physical pairings that could kind of maybe work, uh, Owain's really best as a dark mage or a mage or a sage or something like that. Um, cause Lissa's strength is actually pretty puny. Her base is bad. Um, but yeah, Owain, I would recommend, uh, either Robin, Libra, or maybe Henry. Oh yeah, he has access to Sage anyway, so Henry will work too. Um, uh, and I think... Yeah, I think Owain doing that is probably the best way to uh, use him, you know, Vantage, Vengeance, Nasferatu, win. Mm hmm What if you go Sage, you just kill enemies before they hit you anyway? You just don't care about your HP? Is that the idea? Yeah, so like you have Nasferatu, but if you give him like a Celica's Gale, um, that's a double attack from a vengeance from a vantage act activation anyway yeah and assuming assuming he procs vengeance that that's just a dead enemy before they can even touch him 
I was like, so he's just hoping that he procs it before he uh, before he inevitably dies, I guess. With with two out of two, that's yeah. pretty good. Okay. Um, sounds like he's good, but maybe reliant on Robin to be like the best he can possibly be. I guess like he's still good with Nostradamus, yeah. though. So, like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting this as he's like as good as as as, as Lawrence, but. If you give him Nostradamus, he's right. almost as good for like hard mode, right? Yeah, and I have used Robin and Lissa on Lunatic Plus and had a great grand old time. I actually did get Gale Force on Lissa because I was memeing around. It's not something I would recommend, but it was funny. <laughs> um, no, I, I've, I think... I've tried for it on a plane before. It was not fun. <laughs> Gale Force Lissa. <laughs> Yeah, Gale Force Lissa on Lunatic Plus mode is something. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but yeah, I think I think Owain is solid, probably B plus tier. Mm -hmm. I'd say. I mean, if you want to put him in A tier, I'm willing to break up my I'm willing to break my overlay if it needs if it if it if it's what it requires to get Owain in A. But I can see B plus too. That's fine. Uh, so yeah, I'd say I'd say probably between Pan and Noe. Pan, no, right. Actually, you know what? Above Pan. All right. Above Pan. All right. I ass Owain. I'll take it. I'm not even going to question it because it's just getting Owain higher on a tier list. I'm, I have no objections here. Because <clears throat> <laughs> tiering kids is very, very serious business in Awakening. All right. It is. Shall we move on to what I had? Like, I'm not sure if he is, but for me, he was the worst kid, Brady. Like, I, uh, I think my Patreons, they got to decide every single pairing I did. And I think I married Rickon and Maribel, but I'm not entirely sure on it. No, I married Virion and Maribel, and I was supposed to make him an archer, which I did. It was very disappointing. I don't like the priest class initiative for kids. I don't remember what's so particularly so bad about it. It might be the lack of like real weapon ranks or the inability to train him before reclassing, but neither you know, of those are things that are really important for me, because I was grinding anyway. I don't know what it was, but you praised Archer a lot, and I think that's mostly for Lunatic and Lunatic Plus. For me and Hard. That was just not a very useful class because it was like so enemy face based. I was still going out of my way to get like a bunch of snipes with him whenever I could. But it was like, I'm going to get this kill with Brady because that's like the hardest thing I can do at this point in the game is get kills with a bad unit. So that was, <laughs> uh, it, it was probably one of helping that Virion, he doesn't seem like a very great parent either way. And like, he's like a very good unit in the first place. So having to grind him up is already a, bit, a big chore. I don't know. I got a pretty bad impression of Brady. So maybe you can turn it around, but maybe not. What you got? So, so Brady is actually in the running for one of the worst kids in the game. I still Good. use him a lot because I have a build for him. But the big problem with me, and you'll find I have this problem with Yarn and Nah with their weapon ranks too, is every other kid has the decency to come with C rank in their weapons. Brady starts with a D rank in staves. He can't even use Physic at base, which is basically how you would be leveling him up in Priest. Um, so that's that's one bad thing. Um, and then sometimes I'm kind of at a loss for what to do for his parentage unless I'm going with my meme build. Um... There are ways to make him work. Like I think, I think Rick and Brady is pretty nice um, because he'll usually have Tome Pair, Tome Fair, and something like Dual Support Plus, uh, which is a nice combination. And he can, you know, just go. He has Natural Mage from Maribel, so he can reclass to Mage pretty easily. Um, unfortunately. Uh, e tomes is a little eh, mm -hmm. but he usually has the magic to make it work. The thing is, Maribel's strength is really, really bad. So, this is one of those cases where I'd say always keep him magical because he just struggles to do damage if he's using a physical weapon, which is something I run into with my meme build which is actually giving him Gregor as a parent and having him inherit Arms Thrift. And I end up forging axes for him so he can do damage until he can get to Bolt Axe usage, mm. uh, which is funny. Um, and I like I actually like War Warmonk pair-up bonuses um, because the specific way in which I use this meme is I 
pair him to Morgan to boost her offensive stats and luck for arms thrift. <laughs> that makes sense. You don't want your weapons to break, um, right? Might as well boost your luck. Yeah. Um, but Brady, he's just a hard unit to get off the ground. Um, and... Yeah, I think the best theoretical way is probably to just pair Maribel with Rickon um, to just go as magically as you can. Um, something I have done that was also funny is pair Maribel with Lanku. I initially started doing this because I like Maribel and Lanku's supports. They're kind of an OTP for me. But having Mage Brady with Astra was kind of stupid. <laughs> Um, it, it was just really silly uh, that's one of the things I did on one of my hard mode runs um, but yeah he, he, you can do funny stuff with him he's just really hard to get off the ground because of his weapon rank and starting class mm -hmm. but once you train him with the Astra was he like viable for enemy phases or was it just I'm going to kill a play enemy player phase every turn um so I he's pretty frail because Maribel's pretty frail and also Lanku's pretty frail. That's why I asked. So <laughs> it ended up yeah, it ended up it ended up being like a player phase nuke type of situation. I thought so I was afraid you'd say that. Okay, fair enough. Uh does that make him bad enough for D tier? Because it's he sounds kinda cringe from for me. Like I I feel like Shell sounded more positive, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And that's the thing is because I prefer using Brady because I feel like there's more meme potential basically, but that's not always how you want to rank your units. No, no. It's um, not. I'm afraid not. But I would say either bottom of C, which could get filled out more as we put more kids in there, um, or top of D. All right. How about we give him the mercy C, and then if he does need to be bumped down, we can do it <laughs> later. That's fine with me. Seeds okay. for kids. Brady's That's staying. Alright. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're done with the sea kids. Now we have some uh, some kids these days. Uh, Inigo... Th the first thing that comes to mind for me with Inigo is the fact that his paralog is so damn daunting. Because I did Krom's... Uh, what's the dancer's name? Olivia. Uh, the, the funny pairing. And that paralog opened up like almost right away. So I was like, alright, we can do that next. And I opened it up. It was like level 15 Griffin Riders or something like that. It's just coming down on my freshly promoted Robin. I was like, help. <laughs> help. I still beat it. Yeah. <laughs> I still beat it because we... I think we promoted or reclassed Donald to Bow Knight. Forced him like a super strong bronze bow. Because he had E-rank bows and we shot them down one by one. But that chapter took two episodes of like one and a half hour each to complete. It was not fun. But it was a very funny... It was fun like it was a challenge. But it was daunting. Uh, that doesn't really say much about uh, Inigo himself. I think he starts off as a Merc, right? So that's a good starting class, like as always. Yep. And then, um, I don't know, he seems kind of all right. I, Olivia is kind of weird, uh, kind of a weird parent because she doesn't really strike me as a combat unit. So it's hard to imagine anything good coming out of that class. But I do remember her growth being kind of good. So, and she wasn't terrible. I think the thing with her is that her luck is kind of based. So you can have like some funny luck based skills work on that. I don't remember exactly what my build with Inigo was supposed to be. I just don't remember. Oh, actually, he turned into a hero at the end. So he had soul, and he was like just pretty good all around. I don't think I optimized him properly, but it seemed kind of fair. Um, so it feels like kind of like a Sephira kind of vibe, minus the free-ish guild force. That's the vibe I'm getting. So I think I'm going to have to squeeze him into B+. I think that's going to be where I would rank him now with the knowledge I have now. But please supplement it so I can more accurately tier Inigo. Yes, um, I think Inigo is actually a much worse Severa. Oh, there we go. Um, he, so, Olivia, unless you're dance grinding her a lot, it's hard to get her stats up super high. Um, she's also, unless you're dance grinding, kind of hard to pair off with a guy just because a lot of the time they're not doing pair up combat all the time, which is the easiest way to get support points. Um, That's true. I, I will say about Inigo, him having high luck and coming with arm thrift is very funny. Um, can you can do some silly shenanigans with that? Um, he's another one of those units that it's just 
He frustrates me because he should be so much better than he is. He comes with a killing edge, so he's supposed to be this flashy, you know, I get crits all the time guy. But Olivia's strength is terrible. Unless you get him with a super high strength parent, those crits are going to be doing zero damage. Mm -hmm. So, um, what I personally like to do is so Krom is a pretty good pairing for Inigo, especially if you've actually managed to train Krom and Olivia quite a bit. Um, the funny thing about Krom is he gives Inigo rightful king, which actually procs on his arms thrift. So he he just gets a flat ten percent bonus to his arms thrift procs. Yeah, the proc rate um, was definitely what the what the bribe entailed too. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Um, funny story, you can also do this technically with uh, Krom Morgan. Um, hmm. And that's also pretty funny. Um, I think Krom Morgan makes better use of it. But yeah, so back to Inigo. Uh, for his parents, um, usually I like to keep him in the physical realm just because his strength growth tends to be higher than his magic growth, even with a magic parent, which I have tried. Don't recommend. Um, an, a kind of weird choice that I will sometimes go for is Olivia and Henry, just because Olivia and Henry have an accelerated support, and that's kind of what you want when you have such a late recruit. Um just so you can end up getting the kids earlier. But I found that it's better to pair so that Inigo's actually good in combat, even if that takes a little bit longer getting to the paralogue, because let's be real, the paralogue is really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and having an Inigo who can actually contribute um, is pretty pretty worthwhile um as for dads i would say my favorite would be fred and uh stall um an eagle makes pretty good use out of cavalier um and stall gives him a little bit more variety um both stall and crom can lead to archer and ego which i really like um Myrmidon is also an option thanks to Olivia, but I find making him do less damage when he's already speedy isn't that great. <laughs> um, he can technically do Vantage Nosferatu since he has natural Vantage access, but his magic is so not good that it's it's not worth it unless you're doing a lot of grinding. Um, but, you know, options... Um, I think, I think Stahl is probably his best dad, followed by Fred. Um, and those work because, you know, usually I don't find myself wanting Fred to be the parent of multiple people in, in a, in a regular run. Stahl, I sometimes go, oh my God, why can't he just marry everyone? Yeah, um, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know and either of those will give him pretty easy access to luna which will help with his not so great strength um overall i think he's fine and you know if you're doing a lot of dancing with olivia which i definitely do i i have her dance for someone literally every turn and that adds up to quite a bit. Um, but I don't know. Inigo is just frailer, gale forceless Severa in a lot of cases. Yeah. I'm thinking about how much worse than Severa he is. I was going to go with B, but the way you've been talking about him, it sounds more like he's. I'm afraid to say C, but at the very highest, B minus is what it sounds like to me. Like, he seems better than Shell, I guess, in some aspects. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even better than, than Sairi, but I'm not sure if it's by a whole tier or not. What do you think? Yeah, I'd put him at top of C. 
Top of C. Alright, top of C it is. Okay, he does seem like significantly better than Brady. So yeah, this is first sign to me that Brady maybe should drop down. But we can we can bench that discussion yeah. until we've uh, placed the rest. Uh, so I guess we'll talk about Jerome next. Uh, Shursh's kit, I do believe. And I think he also starts as a Wyvern Rider. Yep. So it's a, it's a good start, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I guess you should get him a little later. I got him like one of the latest, if not the latest, kids in my playthrough. I think I even kept him as a Wyvern, but I'm not 100% sure on it. He was... He actually got some pretty good stats going. I might have made him a Berserker, thinking about it. It's one of those two things. But he definitely became like a big bonk of stats because I grind him a lot late in the game. And he was actually one of my better units for a while. I enjoyed using him. Um, just pretty solid all around. Not as good as like an Asuratu tank, but still, still like strong. Uh, funny mask thing. Uh, we were not super hype on Shursh. I think we had her in B plus before we started tiering, and I moved her down. So her, her combat is kind of yeah. cringe, uh, but it's not so bad that I think it would be a very huge detriment to use her. Uh, she does feel like more easy to use than than Sully uh, at, at base, at least with like the hammer effect in her. So that's not a big detriment to me. But for Jerome, yeah, I, I think I grind him so much I don't have an accurate picture of how good he is if you don't grind. But he seems viable to me at the very least. I'm just not sure exactly how you make him good. I think uh, I think I paired Shersh with Gregor, and so far we've heard that Gregor is a really good parent. So I'm sure that like slightly biases my opinion of him upwards. <laughs> uh, but at least the fact that like I know Gregor is a good option for him makes him a viable unit at the very least. <laughs> so that works. So how good how good do you think he is? Yeah, I think I think in a lot of cases, Jerome is kind of almost Brady level just because he, you know, Shersh is the last uh, female parent unit you get. And uh, so Jerome comes late. Um, his paralogue is awful, also pretty an ego level awful with uh, the stats. Um, and because unless you give him a high speed dad, um, Jerome is usually not contributing a whole lot in his own paralog. Um, especially, you know, I like to reclass my kids right away. Um, but reclassing him right away means he loses flying, which is actually pretty useful in his joint chapter. Um, it's just a lot of times he lacks the speed to double. Um, so like, I don't use him frontline a whole lot, but what I do like to do is have him backline. Um, and he's, and he's pretty built for it, especially with his class access. Uh, Wyvern is a good backup class. If you're looking for strength and defense, same with fighter with which he naturally gets. Um, if he gets Vake Henry or Gregor, he has Barbarian access, which I, I love Barbarian as support because massive strength and speed, especially if you get him to uh, Berserker. Uh, with that in mind, uh, my favorite uh, my favorite dads for him are the Axe Fair dads. Um, I think Henry is a pretty natural choice for a couple of reasons, uh, mainly why he makes a good pair up unit for Shersh um because he has the berserker access and also comes naturally with hex and anathema so you can pass one of those down to jerome with just base henry um which will help his uh dual strikes and if you give him a killer axe and uh have him equipped with anathema things can get pretty funny um and then whoever he pairs with gets but, like the hexathema bonus, bonus to their accuracy, right? Like you said in episode one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, that seems so good. So one of, yeah. So one of the things I actually like doing is if I also have Noir, I like putting him behind Noir, uh, because uh, she'll have even more crits with her bows, and she'll have the strength and speed parrot bonuses. Because at that point, I would usually go barbarian to berserker Jerome. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they, they basically never have to worry about missing anything because of Anathema. Um, because Anathema actually works on 
enemies within three tiles. So that also accounts for longbow. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty fun. Um, Jerome is definitely workable, but in a no grind sending, setting, I would say he is probably the hardest to get off the ground um, next to Brady, just because if you're not grinding Shersha's supports obsessively, he does show up pretty late and then has difficulty contributing in his own join chapter as well as whatever chapters you're at in the story um at least personally for me so it sounds like the best use of him is to use him in that support capacity just put him in the back of someone who can use his, uh, their stats better than he can and just like yeah have that as your free contribution so that like to me that sounds like if that's his optimal use then he should be maybe between uh shell and brady that's exactly what I was thinking. Okay, sounds about right. Because I do like that idea of having him, uh, having a supporting kit. Like, that doesn't seem, like, bad to have. It's just, like, a fine thing. Because, like, cause you can do it with base Henry, right? So you don't have to use him. Just yeah. Just pair him with Shursh. I guess you have to use Shursh a bit. But, like I said, it's not the most painful thing ever. And there's uh, some advantages yeah. to having Henry with Shursh anyway. So, hey, seems kind of neat. It's not, like, it's yeah. not great for a kit, but, you know, it's better than nothing, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Shall we move on to best kid? Oh my gosh! Yes, my I, precious baby. I had an awakening uh, character guide a while ago, and for that one, I had like all the kids in like another one of those cop out tier tiers, and then I had everyone else at, like above or below, and I showed it to someone else. I think it was Rangor, and he said, "Yeah, move Morgan up. I don't care that she. I don't care that he and she are a kid." Uh, they're they're really good. Like, um, there's a lot of ways I can say this, but I came up with this one. Everyone else is kind of like fighting for Robin as a dad, but Morgan is always gonna have it, and that means they're always gonna have everything you ever want. Uh, I like Rally Spectrum a lot as a, as a skill for them personally, as like uh, something they can do. It's a little bit wasteful of like their insane stat capacity, but it is something you really want. I feel like just being able to just hit your entire formation with plus four in every stat is, or it was a is it plus four or plus two? I forgot. Plus it's, four, pl it's plus four, yeah. Yeah, that's. I can't even describe how broken that is. And then in turn one, they just wipe out everything and you win. Uh, that's pretty good. And then also, Morgan themselves is just a Robin plus that starts like slightly worse, maybe, but sometimes their stats even are on par, depending on what you do with them, what level you recruit everyone. Stupidly good unit. Yeah. Uh, I just go with Grandmaster personally because I'm smooth brain. I don't need to think that way. But I'm sure there's a million better <laughs> options for them. Uh, your challenge will be to pick two. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, so yeah, you mentioned Rally Spectrum being uh, kind of a waste of Morgan's combat prowess, which is why one of my favorite things to do is have Morgan either inherit, inherit or get Gale Force. Mm -hmm. Work their way up to Grandmaster 15 to get Rally Spectrum. And then they get Ignis along the way too. So they can Ignis proc ignis which sometimes they don't even need to do uh get a kill on an enemy and then rally spectrum everybody else i think that's a really good way to use morgan it's actually one of my favorite ways to use female morgan um especially when i have robin paired up with cordelia because she'll get gale force um inherit arms thrift reclass to tactician get veteran <laughs> uh promote to grandmaster and then after that, I actually like going Dark Knight with Morgan for the mixed bulk and mixed offense and the move. Um, so uh, Gale Force, then Rally Spectrum is really good. The only downside is they don't benefit from their own Rally Spectrum, but it's Morgan. Do they really need it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's used Rally Spectrum and then everyone else just rallies him back. It's like, here you go, Morgan. Just repay yeah. the favor. Yeah. Especially because usually when I'm running that strat, I have people with uh, rally speed and rally resistance. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty nice for Morgan. Uh, not that Morgan ever really has trouble doubling things. No. Uh, <laughs> especially with uh, plus speed Robin and Cordelia or Sumia as as her parent um that that's that's a lot of speed um 
And uh, in those cases, Morgan starts as a Pegasus Knight, so she'll come with speed plus two anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just in case, just in case. Yeah, it, it can make a difference. Usually not for Morgan, but it can make a difference. <laughs> it's just more enemies go, um, go dead harder, I guess. Just get, get, get triples yeah. and getting doubled. That's the kind of thing I'm imagining the speed plus two does for them. Uh, yeah... Um, the big thing for me is I prefer using female Morgan just because um, she has more versatility in terms of parents. Uh, in a in a hard mode setting, you generally want Crom to be male Morgan's parent. Um, you get two av avatar kids that way. Morgan comes right out of the gate with veteran and usually Gale Force. Um, depending on when you do as Paralog or what you've done with female Robin. Um, which, as I kind of mentioned when we were discussing Inigo, uh, Arms Thrift plus Rightful King works out really well on Morgan. Um, it, can make it can make up for a luck flaw if you've taken one. Um, or if you didn't take a luck flaw, um, he, he just ends up getting to the point where he's never using weapon uses um which can be pretty fun mm -hmm. Wait, uh, i have a question stuck in my head i need to get out real quick you said two avatar kids yeah. don't you almost always get one or don't you always always get two no matter who you pair robin with as long as they have another kid as long as they have another kid yeah but crom is the only option for female robin to pair up with to have two kids Oh, for, yeah, specifically, okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha, okay, please, continue. Yep, you'll get, you'll, you'll get Morgan and, uh, Lucina. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people I see, you know, recommend third gen Morgan, which is really good for end game stuff, but unfortunately, by the time you get the kids, um, that's kind of too late to be building a support with someone that, uh, that you want to parent Morgan because then you just get Morgan so late. Um, especially because Robin doesn't have accelerated supports with anyone. So it would basically have to be Lucina at that point because you get her the earliest. Um... And you'd have to save, like, Paralogs 2 and 3 and possibly 4 to get their supports up in time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't recommend uh, second-gen pairings for Robin, at least not in a normal, like, hard mode or lunatic, lunatic plus situation. Um, it's something you can do if you want to take on Apotheosis. There are some silly, stupid builds you can do for Morgan in that case. But, yeah, it's just not the best for hard mode. Mm -hmm. uh, no grind. Mm -hmm. um, I will say some honorable mentions for uh, a, um, a male Morgan parentage. I'll allow it. Would probably, <laughs> would probably be Stahl and Gregor. Um, because uh, Morgan's class is influenced by whatever the second parents class was and Morgan starting as a cav or as a merc is pretty good um just because of the base skills you get and uh you can end up reclassing to tactician to get veteran um or if you paired if you paired Robin with Crom uh Morgan will automatically start out as a tactician cuz he can't inherit lord um and usually usually end game builds for male morgan i usually go warrior uh just because uh high strength bow's good especially against grima uh he can do a similar strat to the cynthia and lucina one i described earlier and for female morgan uh kind of depends on the parent but usually I have her doing Dark Knight shenanigans uh, just because uh, Tomes and Swords 
And usually I'm not having her be the one going after Grima. Usually I have a better unit for that. Mm -hmm. But it's like a morphal lunatic kind of thing, right? Because you say yeah. I usually, and it's usually when you play, it's lunatic. <laughs> that's, the only, <laughs> that's the only transition I'm making. Okay. Uh, I mean, does 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 Grima have Pavis on hard? I don't remember. My last playthrough was on Lunatic, funnily enough. Um, you might already be seeing it at the bottom right. If I still have if I still have footage left for the Frederick Solo <laughs> at this point, uh, then you can see my struggles against Grima uh, in Lunatic. But I don't remember what yeah. he has in hard. I just know he was like kind of annoying to get down on hard and like a specific amount of HP because Awakening is filled with random crits and dual strikes, and then Grima has these random proc skills as well. So yeah, I I also yeah. don't remember, but you know. He's just funny at that point. Anyway. I think he does, so I would still prefer using bows on, on Grima. Mm -hmm. um, just to get around that. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously not as tough to take down on in, uh, in... in Not as hard to take down in hard mode as in Lunatic. Um, the one funny thing, though, is that Vengeance strats actually work better on Lunatic because Grima has Ignis and Rightful God. Oh yeah. Um so he can deal almost your whole HP with that in damage and then you just vengeance blick him. <laughs> Get back Grima. Okay. I have a yeah. weird proposal for where to put Morgan. Um because the sense I'm getting is that he's that he and she are significantly better than a lot of the units that are already in A tier. So my first sense is like either they just go above Sumia or they go where Frederick is in S minus. But th that seems high and Frederick is so unique that I'm not sure about it. What do you think? Um That's the vibe I'm getting. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't get me don't get me wrong. Yeah, maybe that, maybe that's, they're just That's lower where I'm at. Okay. The, that that's where I'm at too. Um Honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to making an A plus tier mm. for them if if you're down with that. Otherwise, I think uh, I, I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine with them being somewhere in between Fred and Sumia. Um, I could do that. But I'll make it, it is a question. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. That's uh, for one, it keeps all the rows intact, and that's always neat and aesthetically pleasing. But uh, I, I like the solution too, actually. They, they're, they're like, they're so different from Fred. Uh, I do feel like the late game dominance is like probably better than Fred's at points in the game, but I'm not sure if it invalidates the fact that Frederick is so good early on, you know what I mean? So drag you here. Yeah. Drag you here. Uh, I think I got the female ahead of the male one. That's the way that's what we wanted, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. So in that case, it should be good yeah. here. And it's fine to add an extra tier anyway, because the, the kids these days' tier is going to be gone at the end of this. Although right now it's not on screen. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, my overlay can't handle it. Um, let me temporarily park Yarn and Na uh, in the C tier where all the kids were earlier. And then we can tier them. And for me, Yarn was... I think a points to the playthrough was one of the best units. He might have been surpassed by the end, but he was definitely really, really, really strong because I paired uh, Pan with Donal and I passed on Aptitude, which is, of course... If you don't know anything else about Awakening, you know that growth and stats going up, ding, 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 is very fun and good. So he got a lot of green numbers, he got very high stats. I think he ended up as a Berserker, and I think I gave I must have given him boots, because I remember his movement being very high. And so he just kind of ran through everything and killed everything, which was very, very entertaining to do. And I, I'm sure it's not the optimal way to play, obviously not, because it involved using Donald, uh, but it's... I have I have an association of very high stats with Yarn, is basically what I'm saying. So I'm biased towards his statistical prowess. I'm not sure how warranted it is, because I think you've already mentioned once or twice that Yarn has some problems, some, some parenting problems, if you will. Uh, he... I think you said he has he doesn't have good weapon ranks because he's a tech well. I guess that might be a big problem for his initial classing, but I am sure there are ways to make him somewhat viable. And uh, I fully expect he'll be S-plus by the end of this session. So, uh, what do we got for Yarn? <laughs> <laughs> How good is he actually? Okay. Yes. So, like I said, Yarn struggles at the beginning because he comes with no weapon ranks. And Togwell is not really a class you want to stay in, as we've established with Pan. Um, 
I think the best parent for him is Stahl. Here comes Stahl yet again. Yeah, big surprise. Uh, but but I'm totally going to make like <laughs> Stahl's confession scene the thumbnail for this video just because of how many times he was recommended. You're him or Gregor. <laughs> um, yeah, Stahl makes a great pair up for Pan. Uh, she appreciates Cavalier bonuses, as do most people. Um, but giving Yarn discipline so he can actually get his weapon rank up is really good. Um, he can actually reclass directly to a Cavalier um, and make good use of that class. Uh, my personal favorite thing to do is kind of the same as Stahl Severa, which is passing him discipline and reclassing him to Archer. And I like having him go Archer Sniper Warrior. Um, he can frontline pretty well with this setup. Um, and he can, uh, he can really be a really good, uh, blah, why am I saying it that way? He can be an amazing pair-up unit because of that. After Sniper, you can even have him go Bow Knight if his partner really, really wants speed. Um, but Burn's main thing with that buildup is hitting super duper hard with bows. Pan has really good strength. Stahl has really good strength. Yarn will end up with really good strength. And eventually bow fair. And he will never miss because of prescience and hit plus 20. Um, so I really like using him in that context. Um, and if if we give him Stahl as a parent, I, I think he would go in probably A- minus around with Laurent. Unfortunately, you can't give Stahl to everyone. I think he also works pretty well with Gregor. You know, another another unit that is good on... <laughs> um, because uh, then Yarn can eventually get Soul and just rip things apart that way. He doesn't have to worry about really increasing his damage with Crocs because his strength is so high. But having Soul to absorb hit points uh, to keep him alive is pretty fun. Um, also pretty useful. Um, if I had to stretch for a different parent, um, I'm just looking at who we have here. Um, actually, I think Lanku might be pretty good um, because that actually gives him the highest non-Morgan speed in the game. Um, and you can do some really fun things with that and like avoid plus 10 and a breaker skill. Um, and he can get a bunch of breaker skills, weapon breaker skills that way because Lanku gives him Wyvern back, which is two breaker skills there right away. Um, so there are a ton of ways to have fun with Yarn, but his his best parent is, is Stahl in my mind for the reasons I've mentioned. Daddy Stahl coming in clutch. So you compared him to Laurent earlier, so he was like... <laughs> that good if he was guaranteed Lawrence or if he was guaranteed um style as a parent but if he's not he's a little bit worse so but actually like a tier worse or just like kind of like Sephora Cynthia style worse because um, initially we're gonna go for a B tier plus. worse yeah that's what I th that's what I thought I heard so yeah uh there's no other kids here besides Owain so is he worse than Owain should be right um, I'd say even with a non-optimal parent, he's probably better than Owain. Hmm, okay. So we just put him at the B plus by default then, basically. Yeah. Alright, that's fair. Let's see how badly this is going to wreck things. Alright, bye, Donald. Hope you enjoy being on screen for the entire episode. He's probably... Donald probably doesn't <laughs> want to be on screen anyway. He's an FT. He's an FT. He doesn't want to be seen here. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. We can knock Lissa down to B minus later. It would be fine. Uh... Oh yeah, we were kind of thinking about that, weren't we? Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll just do that now to uh, get Donald back on screen. That works for me. Um, but we have one more, <laughs> one more character to tier first that might mess everything up again. Uh, that's Nah. I 
think I didn't recruit not ever until my most recent playthrough. And I think mana are very fun. I don't think I mentioned this on YouTube yet, but I did an all series draft with a couple friends uh, in DM somewhere uh, where we drafted characters from the entire series. It took us like three different sessions to get through. And at some point I just had to go for all the mana keys. So uh, among others, I have Na, I have a chance <laughs> to use her. Uh, I do really enjoy using, I did really enjoy using uh, Naoi and Tiki. And Na have very similar unit feel in that way. Uh, but of course, Na is much more customizable, you know, with her being a kid and all. And so I got a bunch of different recommendations from the Patreons. I'm not sure which I ended up going with, but I know that it was pretty hard to mess up Na in such a casual setting where, you know, the Maniki class itself is just like pretty funny bunga go high numbers. And so optimizing it is like, it's fun, but it's not necessary to make her good. Uh, but in no grind context, I'm not sure what's actually optimal for her, if you if you know what I mean. Uh, so I'm not sure where to go with there. I think... Uh, who did I, I, I'm not even sure who her dad was, which I, which I feel really bad about because that's something every kid should know, but you know, I'm sorry, not, I don't remember. <laughs> but I do know she turned out really well uh, because this their, their starting class is so funny. I don't think I even reclassed her ever. I think maybe, I think now might have been the only unit that I just second sealed down to her base class again just to get her more levels. <laughs> I think that's my, it was either her or Naoi that I did that with. Um, but yeah, she seems really funny, but I'm not sure how good she is. So please enlighten us all. Yeah, so Na is one of those units that you basically never want outside of her base class unless you're briefly going like Mercy Hero to pick up Arms, Thrift, and Soul. Yeah, to go back then, um, right? Afterwards. Yeah, yeah. then to go back to Maniki, yeah. Um, it's kind of a shame this is a no-grind setting because if you can get Donald up and pass her aptitude, <laughs> it is extremely funny. Uh, plus two to HP, plus one to all of their stats, basically every single level. Um, she caps so quickly, it's hilarious. Um, but this is a no-grind setting, and Donald is still F tier, so we're going to go with, um, actually, I, I really like Male Robin with Noe, not for shipping purposes, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna comment on that, uh, but... Um, Robin being able to pass down veteran to not, it, it just it, more hilarity ensues because at least for her first 30 levels or at least for her first 20 levels she's regarded as being in a base class when it comes to experience and um, levels 21 to 30 she's just regarded as promoted 1 through 10 and her internal level when you reset her um, doesn't actually go up that much. So basically, Na gets a lot of experience anyways. So having veteran is just icing on the cake. Um, male Robin in Mercenary as well can uh, really help Noe because she really likes mercenary parrot bonuses for reasons we've discussed earlier. And basically, and then you get out of the deal, you get two veteran manikeets because female Morgan will start as a manikeet and will also presumably inherit veteran. Uh, between those two and Noe, things just get torn to shreds. Um, and it is a pair I've actually used on Lunatic Plus before because Mana Keats having one to two range um, is pretty good. Unfortunately, you can't like unequip them to avoid them taking counter damage without really hurting their stats because of how uh, Dragonstones work. But um, it's it's pretty funny to watch things just completely die to your army of manikeets. Um And that's what Robin and Noe allows you to do. Um, Runner-up parent, I would say, is guess who? Gregor. <laughs> because he also gives mercenary bonuses to Noe and allows Na to have uh, of course uh, soul and arms thrift. It's just Merc Robin uh, version 2.0, right? Or version 0.5, yeah. I suppose. 
Yeah, basically. Um, as for runner-up parents, um, I've had good experience with uh, Vake as a parent for her, just giving her soul. Um, and he also gives Na a little bit of speed, which is one of her weak points because of her mom. But that's one of the things where like a plus speed Robin comes in handy. Or if you're just doing hard or lunatic, plus defense will be very funny because then they just take no damage. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Na is pretty restricted to having only a couple of really good parents, but given any of those parents, she does pretty well. Sounds like it. So if we assume, like I said earlier, the assumption is that she gets you with a good pairing. It doesn't have to be the Robin pairing, which is obviously the best one, or even... It doesn't have to, it sounds like it doesn't have to be Robin or Stahl or Gregor, but it kind of, you kind of really want it to be one of those. I guess Vake also works well enough. Okay, so we have like those four as a baseline, right? So she, assuming she gets one of those four, does that make her good enough to be... Uh... A minus? Cause she, like she sounds really good, but she's like, there's like some minor issues that I'm not, that I'm noticing. So maybe B plus is the way to go for her. I'm not sure. What do you think? I would say I would say probably B plus between Pan and Noe. Pan and Noe. All right. I guess we can put it there then. So like better than Noe then. All right. It's always interesting when kids are better. Than yeah. Noe. Okay. So we've messed up the aesthetics after all. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's the whole squad. That's the whole thing. I yeah. I don't. I don't have enough knowledge to have like any major major objections, but I do think uh, we can move Brady down like fairly confidently now to D tier. I think that was something we kind of wanted anyway, yeah. right? So we can put him like above Maribel at yeah. least. Yeah. Yeah. Still, it's funny how most kids ended up like yeah, around a lot their of parents. Kids end up yeah, a lot of kids are similar to their own parents, and a lot of the time they will be better than their own parents because aside from their availability, they're just like their parents, but better because of yeah. better growths and uh, more skill access and class access. Um, yeah, and the kids join at like a level but, where you can yeah. still like, you can insta promote them, you can insta reclass them. So they're very. They, they snowball very hard over their parents when you do get them eventually. Which is yeah, nice. that's very true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you would like to change? Because I have no other things that come to mind right now when I'm looking at this tier list. It looks funky to me, but that's because kids are funky. That's just how they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think it looks pretty good. This is basically how I would tier everybody. Um, yeah, I think everyone looks good. Uh, I, I wish I could like shrink B plus tier so it's all one line. I know, but right? I'm sure you do too. I know, right? Um, <laughs> well, unless you like uh, the things, we can't move anyone to A minus, and we can't really, unless you want to move someone from B plus to B minus again, like move Lunku down or something. I can't really think of any way to solve that. I'd, I'd be okay with Longku being in at top of B minus, honestly. All right, I'll just do this for the picture. Longku, trust me. After we take the picture, you can go back. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> there you go. Now it all fits nicely. Longku was nerfed by aesthetics. Here we go. Got him. <clears throat> yeah. All right. All good. Uh, I guess we can we can close it out then. So, for the third time, Casey, thank you so much for enlightening me and everyone who's still watching at this point with uh, this encycl encyclopedia of uh, awakening knowledge. I really appreciate <laughs> learning more about a game that is probably the one I know the least about. So, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem. Well, if you have any questions, any angry comments about your, your ships being broken up or your eugenics being disturbed, feel free to leave them in the comments and uh, I'll be sure not to answer them, but I'm, I'm sure someone will. Uh, peace out and goodbye. See ya.